Hello and welcome to the news in Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, chaired a work meeting today at Al Gadebiya Palace to review the number of options and alternatives that can help in boosting the economic situation and financial stability. During the meeting, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister expressed his deep thanks and pride to the brotherly countries of Saudi Arabia, Kuwait and the United Arab Emirates for the highly appreciated commitment to provide the necessary support to enhance the financial conditions in the Kingdom. His Royal Highness noted that the move of the three brotherly countries adds to the noble stances regarding Bahrain, which reflect common destiny in a deep sense and in addition to fruitful cooperation and bilateral ties. His Royal Highness asserted that the government continues its keen efforts and policies of economic reforms in order to achieve the balance between revenues and expenditures to ensure the stability of the financial situation. The Prime Minister stressed that the government continues to work on promoting the sustainability of government funding and the construction of monetary reserves to ensure stability, support and strengthen the national economy. The Premier also directed a specialised committee to formulate visions that ensure the achievement of financial balance in the short, medium and long terms, while not putting burdens on the citizens and preserving the Kingdom's achievements, headed by the Deputy Prime Minister and Chairman of the Ministerial Committee for Financial Affairs and Control of Spending, including the membership of the Minister of Finance and the Governor of the Central Bank of Bahrain. During the meeting, His Royal Highness was briefed during the meeting by the Minister of Finance and the Governor of the Central Bank of Bahrain on the latest developments in the economic and financial situation of the Kingdom and the options that enhance the economic strength of Bahrain, especially in the light of the current economic challenges. The personal representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs and President of the Board of Trustees of the Royal Charity Organisation, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a cable of condolences to the Grand Imam of Al Azha, Sheikh Dr Ahmed Al Tayyib, on the demise of his sister. His Highness wished the soul of deceased eternal peace and her family abundant health. Under the patronage of the personal representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs and Chairman of the Board of Trustees of NASA Rehabilitation and Vocational Training Centre, the NVTC, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, a graduation ceremony was held today for the centre's second batch of 208 students at Sheikh Abdulaziz bin Mohammed Al Khalifa Hall in the University of Bahrain in the presence of the Minister of Education, Dr Majid bin Ali Al Nuemi, and a number of officials. His Highness Sheikh Nasser affirmed the importance of training and rehabilitating Bahraini youth and providing them with potentialities and expertise to utilise their energies as well as endorsing various sectors in government and private authorities with Bahraini cadres to enhance the leading position of the Kingdom in accordance with the directors of His Majesty the King that are aimed at developing the youth system. He stated that Bahrain believes that a comprehensive system to develop all the Kingdom sectors and reach comprehensive development will not be built without a partnership with the youth. His Highness Sheikh Nasser noted that NVTC is active in the current stage through attracting a group of Bahraini youth to train them, teach them and direct them towards creativity and hard work, noting that the centre has been able to enhance the definition of vocational and technical education sector. His Highness Sheikh Nasser congratulated the graduates and their parents on the success they have achieved, wishing them further success in their future endeavours 
and healing the efforts of the Ministry of Education. The Minister of Education delivered a speech in which he welcomed His Highness Sheikh Nasser to the ceremony, which affirms the success of the centre in achieving the goals for which it was established, in line with the vision of His Majesty the King. The Minister asserted that in the implementation of the directors of His Highness Sheikh Nasser to support the centre, the Ministry exerted efforts to incorporate it into the governmental education and training system and to develop its performance through many effective measures. The Minister noted that the efforts of the Ministry contributed to developing the centre's performance and its outcome of its students. The Sheikh Nasser Vocational Training Center celebrated their second graduation ceremony patronized by His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa and in the presence of high posted officials including Dr. Majid bin Ali Naimi, the Minister of Education and Mr. Riyad Hamza, the President of the University of Bahrain as well as Dr. Mustafa Sayyid, Chairman of the Royal Charity Organization. We are highly privileged today for having His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa a representative of His Majesty the King and the Chairman of the Board of Trustees of uh, Nasser Vocational uh, uh, Training Center in this graduation ceremony of the second cohort. Uh, students have graduated after three years of being given state-of-the-art curriculum, knowledge and a practice in vocational uh, education and now they are ready to join vocational organizations uh, everywhere. Uh, this actually certificate has been accredited by the Ministry of Education, uh, which now has the, uh, the center under its umbrella. We have actually given the center all uh, the support based on the directives of His, His, Majesty, His, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. Nasser Vocational Training Center in Bahrain is considered a unique model in the kingdom due to its building specialties and the distinguished training solution it renders, which qualify students and provide them with the professional skills required in the country's labor market, with international standards applied through advanced strategy and long-term objectives.
We have the vocational training completely a British qualification with ECITB organization from UK. Also we have a standard for English language. Uh, we have 5.5 uh, IELTS score to graduate our technical students and I'm so happy to announce that many uh, students got 7.5 for this year. That's really amazing uh, result. Uh, our main focus is on the quality of teaching, quality of the training. That's what we're providing uh, to Bahrain uh, industry market and also higher education. As an Nasser Vocational Center, uh, it's, it's an add-on to what we have here in Bahrain from technical high schools. The empowerment of their students is done through a transformative and advanced educational system that equips them with skills and broadens their views. The center motivates their students to advance their own careers and also delivers significant social impact through entrepreneurship, innovation by receiving world-class education. NASA Vocational Training Center had helped us in many ways. Uh, he helped us in our technician and vocational studies. Like the technician study, we had mechanical studies and me uh, electromechanical studies. Uh, during the last months of the studies, we went to training to Bobco, Farmco, Gramco, and Alba. In these places, uh, the, the, this, this factory has helped us to develop our skills and uh, knowledge and our handwork. Like uh, they told us about the petrol and they told us about the factory, how it consisted, and how to do m manual handworks. And in the future, we hope to develop Bahrain to the greatest. We have to evolve it and make it finance higher and higher and reach it to the world class. This is Sarah Lebrek reporting for Bahrain International. The personal representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs and Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Royal Charity Organization, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, yesterday patronized the seventh mass wedding ceremony organized by the Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nayan Foundation for Charity Work for 1,000 young men and women at Art Rutana Hotel in Amwaj. The event is considered the biggest of its kind, organized and supported by the foundation in the kingdom. His Highness hailed the support of the Honorary President of the RCO, His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, to humanitarian work, noting that His Majesty is the prime supporter to charity work through his many initiatives. Sheikh Nasser praised the deep-rooted relations between Bahrain and the United Arab Emirates and the support of the foundation to the ceremony. He congratulated the new newweds, praying to Allah the Almighty to bless them in their new lives. For his part, the ambassador of the UAE to Bahrain, Sheikh Sultan bin Hamdan al Nayan, commended the support of His Majesty the King to the wedding ceremony. The ambassador said that this generous support comes within the framework of brotherly relations between the two brotherly countries and the continuation of the collective marriage ceremonies, encouraged by the wise leadership of the UAE in order to reduce the costs and burdens of married people. The seventh group marriage celebration took place today at the Artsurtana Hotel on Amwaj Island. The wedding is the starting platform for 1,000 couples who have chosen to start their matrimonial life together, for better and for worse. The wedding was organized by the Sheikh Khalifa bin Zaud Al Nahyan Foundation for Humanitarian Works in collaboration with the RCO and under the patronage of His Majesty the King. Present was the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Works and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and and His Highness Sheikh Sultan bin Hamdan Al Nahyan, Ambassador of the UAE to Bahrain. I thanked first uh, His Majesty the King for uh, patronizing all our humanitarian programs and efforts. Uh, I express also my satisfaction for the wonderful relation bet uh, between His Majesty and his brother. Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed, ruler of uh, UAE, and that historic relation uh, has formed this uh, bonding. Uh, we have um, many col uh, collaboration in different humanitarian fields. Uh, today is one of them. You, you saw the presence of Sheikh Nasser uh, and his joy uh, is our greatest supporter. Uh, we welcomed him. Uh, also, we are happy that the new UAE ambassador, uh, Sheikh Sultan uh, Al Nahyan, uh, uh, 
was also present, giving his support. Uh, a lot of work went into organizing this amazing setting and pictures. Days and sleepless night last night was worth it. It was a wedding of 1,000 people, uh, brides and bridegrooms. Uh, this comes as part of the strategy of His Majesty of creating a dignified life for the people of Bahrain in all spheres of life. His Excellency Dr. Mustafa Sayyid gave a speech directed at the grooms, further enhancing the belief of starting a life of happiness dedicated to each other and influenced with love for each other and patriotism to the country. Another speech was given by Mr. Mohammed Hadji Khouri, the general manager of the Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan Foundation for Humanitarian Works. He pointed out that from the first such wedding until today, 3,646 couples have benefited and started their marital life together. Thank His uh, Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa uh, for his pertinence of uh, the group wedding today. Uh, today we had uh, 1,000 couples uh, who uh, had the party this afternoon. And also I'd like to thank His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the President of the United Arab Emirates. As well as, I'd like to thank His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, uh, the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi, for their support of, the, of su uh, succeeding the group wedding in the Kingdom of Bahrain. This is Sarah Break reporting for Bahrain International. During the Shura Council's extraordinary session, the Council's Chairman Ali bin Saleh Asala expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, on the occasion of the end of the fourth session of the fourth legislative term, and hailed their support. The Shura Council approved a draft law, ratifying the main system of the Judicial and Economic Authority of the Gulf Cooperation Council countries, and a draft law amending a number of provisions of the traffic law issued under Law 23 of 2014. The Council approved a draft law ratifying a cooperation agreement between the governments of Bahrain and Cyprus to combat terrorism, organised crime, trafficking in narcotics and psychotropic substances, illegal migration and other criminal offences provided in the agreement. It also approved a draft law ratifying a cooperation agreement in the field of maritime and commercial navigation between the Bahraini and Egyptian governments. The Minister of Interior, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, attended today a celebration organised by the Ministry on the occasion of the International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking. Present were the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments, the Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, the Chief of Public Security, the Municipal Governor and a number of officials, as well as participants in the Media Between Reality and Aspirations in the Prevention of Drug Convention, which concluded today. On this occasion, the Minister of Interior expressed thanks and appreciation to all the participating authorities for their extensive efforts to combat drugs. He commended the effects of the Anti-Narcotics Directorate and praised its performance of its duties. The Minister expressed his appreciation for the many working papers presented in the conference by experts and media, noting that the media plays a major role in the fight against drugs. He noted the importance of cooperation and understanding with the media to combat drugs. He added that protecting the community against the dangers of drugs is a challenge that calls for unifying national efforts to face their perils. He stressed that eliminating drug-related threats could be through a comprehensive awareness of the risks of narcotics on the growth of societies. He said that the future goals could be achieved through narcotics-free communities. The Minister noted that the recommendations of the conference will be studied during the National Commission for Drug Control, underscoring the importance of spreading awareness against the dangers of drugs. For his part, the Director General of Criminal Investigation and Chairman of the Higher Organising Committee of the Conference, Brigadier Abdulaziz Abramehi, stated that the organisation of the conference stems from the firm belief in the importance of the role of media in changing human behaviour. He announced a competition of the best university research and drug prevention for university students studying in Bahrain. The head of the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, the UNODC, for the GCC region, Judge Hatham Ford Ali, delivered a speech. 
in which he expressed the UN's appreciation to the national efforts exerted to combat drugs. A movie was screened during the celebration that reviewed the efforts and achievements made with regard to the implementation of the objectives of the National Plan for the Control of Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic Substances since it was launched by the Minister of Interior. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, participated today in the opening of the 12th edition of, Sheikh of Souk Okaz in Taif province, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, in the presence of His Royal Highness, the advisor of the custodian of the two holy mosques, and Prince of Mecca province, Prince Khalid Al Faisal. His Royal Highness, Prince Badr bin Abdul Mosin Al Abdulaziz Al Saud, and His Royal Highness, the President of the Saudi Commission for Tourism and National Heritage, the SCTC, and Chairman of the Supreme Supervisory Committee of Souk Ukaz, Prince Sultan bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. The Minister of Foreign Affairs thanked His Royal Highness Prince Sultan bin Salman Al Saud for his invitation to attend the opening of Souk Ukaz, expressing pride in taking part in this cultural and touristic event that has gained recognition at both the Gulf and regional levels. The Minister hailed the efforts exerted by the Saudi Commission for Tourism and National Heritage in developing Souk Ukaz as well as highlighting and preserving the heritage of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. He also noted that the SCTCH has implemented a number of cultural and touristic projects that reflect the capabilities of the Kingdom. In implementation of the directors of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, of distributing 5,000 housing units and in line with the directors of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa in meeting the citizens' needs and in following up with the government's efforts, led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, of implementing its action programme, the Minister of Housing, Bazm bin Yaqub Al Hama, announced the distribution of the apartments of Al Hajiyat housing project. The Minister added that the distribution procedures were followed by the elections of the beneficiaries' union administrations noting that establishing a union in every residential building aims to achieve the rights of the residents. The Minister affirmed that the Ministry will continue to receive beneficiaries in batches for two days, adding that the distribution programme is proceeding according to schedule. He stated that the Ministry is keen on directing all its efforts to achieve the important housing eligibility. He noted that Al Hajiyat housing project is among the projects listed in the Ministry's work programme of constructing 25,000 housing units in light of the directors of His Majesty the King of implementing 40,000 housing units within the specified time frame. Upon the directors of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to develop urgent solutions to increase the flow of traffic and the main road network in the Kingdom, the Ministry of Works, Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning announced the implementation of the development project of Street 47 in Sanad between the capital and the southern governorate. The Ministry affirmed that the government project will develop the expansion of the street and construction of a water drainage network, sidewalks and street lighting. The Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities organised a tour for the participating delegation of the 42nd meeting of the UNESCO World Heritage Committee, which is hosted by Bahrain. The tour included various heritage sites listed on the World Heritage List, located within the Pearl Road project, which contains many historic urban complexes in Maharik. The tour allowed visitors an opportunity to identify with Bahrain's diverse cultural heritage and its history, dating back to the 4th millennium BC. The aim is to have not only the meetings, but as well to have them visit our cultural sites. Bahrain is known for a number of uh, fort heritage sites. So we have the Pearling Route here in Maharak, and we have Bahrain Fort. Yesterday night we visited uh, Bahrain uh, Fort, uh, around 80 participants. They had a good idea about how was Bahrain Fort inscribed in the World Heritage List, what is the main and values of the site. Today we have, we're having a tour at uh, Maharak. Uh, they're, they're witnessing how the Pearling Route is a, is a testimony to an island economy. The Pearling Testimony is a World Heritage Site that was inscribed in 2012. Uh, it's the second uh, World Heritage Site of Bahrain. 
And uh, it was a great occasion now for the visit uh, of the uh, World Heritage Committee to Bahrain to actually show them the, the site. I think we're going to get a lot of feedback uh, because they're all also um, the professionals of, of the profession of heritage and protecting heritage and conservation. So it's interesting to see uh, this input from different cultures. I just found it really interesting to find out like what the um, economic drivers for Bahrain was, so like the pearling industry, so I was like that's really interesting and different uh, but makes sense because of its location so just that brief explanation was yeah really interesting to hear about and to see like this project and how it's been done like it's something I've never seen um, like in terms of its layout its presentation so it's just a different experience. So. On the sidelines of the 42nd World Heritage Committee meeting hosted by the Kingdom of Bahrain a workshop was held within the framework of the session. More in this report with Shog Mohammed. The Arab Regional Centre for World Heritage organised a lecture on the reconstruction of material cultural heritage and its impact on local identity and human memory today at the UNESCO village at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel. The panel addressed the serious damage caused by natural and human disasters to the cultural heritage of communities. Our session today was on, uh, you know, exchanging experience on uh, the importance of uh, the reconstruction, the work that we are doing, the lesson that we learned from uh, some, some of the experience from other regions in, in order to also reflect this experience in the very important uh, initiatives that are taken for the region in uh, Syria, in Yemen, in Iraq, uh, because this is important. And to, uh, let's say, uh, with this experience, to really cooperate with the Category 2 Center of UNESCO, which is here based in, uh, in Bahrain, which is doing a very uh, fantastic work, and we need to support them. The World Heritage Center launched several initiatives to protect heritage in Arab countries, including the Uniting for Heritage social media campaign, as well as efforts at the diplomatic level and capacity building of experts and specialists. Today we spoke about a matrix for documenting case studies that would be uh, a, a sort of um, accompaniment to, to, to this guidance. So this matrix aims at uh, building, uh, documenting case of recovery and, and reconstruction of cultural heritage uh, through a frame that is, tries to address all the different issues that should be possibly documented in order to be as comprehensive as possible. It is uh, something that is probably the most appealing question because no one knows how to oppose destruction, how to prevent destruction. We have not developed the means. So the conservation architects who are here in this world to preserve the heritage, to extend its life for a certain period, are now faced with a request to give rebirth to some sites by the community. The World Heritage Committee is holding its 42nd meeting under the chairmanship and hosting of the Kingdom of Bahrain and offers various side events such as lectures, workshops, charity concerts and tours of heritage sites in the Kingdom of Bahrain. The committee will continue to hold its meetings until July 4th, 2018. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Shog Mohammed. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain and Egypt have decided to file a complaint on a dispute with Qatar over the use of airspace to the UN's International Court of Justice. The four Arab countries said the International Civil Aviation Organization was not competent to consider the dispute after it considered two requests submitted by Qatar. The four countries said that they are appealing to the court while the ICAO will cease to consider Qatari claims until a ruling from the International Court of Justice is issued.